Gas stoichiometry. What exactly is gas stoichiometry? Well, that's the topic for today, and we're going to be looking at what gas stoichiometry is and how we apply it. Now, one of the things we have to do is we have to understand what is stoichiometry. This goes back to our previous chapters where we talked about stoichiometry specifically. Remember, stoichiometry is just utilizing the mole-to-mole -mole ratio within a balanced chemical equation. Now, in terms of gas stoichiometry, what we're going to do is we're going to be applying the gas laws that we've learned and along with the stoichiometry part. So, as you can see on the screen here, we have two different problems that we're going to be working with. And it's just more or less just practicing getting used to understanding when to use what gas law and 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 basically answering the question that, that it's asking. So as we look at question number one, it says carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. If one liter of carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen at STP, how many liters of oxygen are required to react? So before we can even do this problem, we have to write out the balanced equation. And so doing that is basically just looking at the problem. It says carbon monoxide reacts. So carbon monoxide is CO. It's going to react with oxygen gas to form CO2. Now to balance this equation out, we're going to put a 2 in front of the CO and 2 in front of the CO2. And that gives you two COs. It gives you four oxygens, and then on the left side you have two oxygens plus the two, so that's four oxygens. So everything's balanced at this point. So to answer the the part A, we're gonna we have to understand a few things that it's telling us in the problem. It says if one liter of carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen at STP, so it says at STP. So that's a that's an important detail there to understand because whenever you're working at STP, you can use molar volume, which is 22.4 liters per mole of gas. Now, if it did not say STP, we could use the ideal gas law to solve the problem if enough information has been provided. But in these two examples, we're going to focus on at STP just to keep it simple for right now. So. So let's get to the question. It says, how many liters of oxygen are required to react? So they, they give you one liter of carbon monoxide gas. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to convert our liters into moles of gas. That's where the molar volume comes into play. So we're going to divide it by 22.4 liters per mole of CO. And that's the first step is just getting the the liters canceled out now our second step will be going from moles of co into moles of o2 now going from moles to moles that goes back to using the mole ratio so we look at the mole ratio in the balanced equation so it, it's uh, one mole of o2 for every two moles of CO. Now, our last step here is we have to answer the question, how many liters of oxygen are required? Well, we have moles. We're going to convert back into liters. And so we're going to go back and use the same molar volume, 22.4 liters per mole. So we're going to multiply by that. And it's going to give you liters of oxygen gas so now just doing a little conversion so units go away here these units will come will cancel here and that leaves you with liters of oxygen gas so now you just have to plug it in and so as you plug it in you will equal 0 0.5 liters of oxygen gas so that's the answer for part a So let's look at part B. It says, how many liters of CO2 are produced? Well, this is very similar to the previous problem we just worked. The only difference is now we're going to be solving for CO2 as compared to oxygen gas. So again, we're still using the one liter of CO. That did not change. But what we 
are going to do is we're going to have to pay attention to the mole ratio that will potentially change. So if we look at the balanced equation up here, we have two moles of CO2 for every two moles of CO. So you have two moles of CO2 on top because you're solving for CO2. You have two moles of CO on the bottom. So the moles of CO cancel out and these liters cancel out also. So our last step here is we're still solving for liters again. So we're going to go back to using the 22.4 liters per mole. This time it's liters of CO2 versus liters of CO. So these moles cancel out here. And uh, just going through the basic calculation, you ought to end up with this one liter of CO2 for your answer. So that's one A and B. Now let's look at two. All right, so problem two says, acetylene gas undergoes combustion to produce CO2 in water vapor. First thing we want to do is write out the balanced equation. So acetylene gas formula is C2H2. It's going to re it's combustion, so it's going to react with oxygen gas and it's going to form CO2 plus H2O. So balance the equation. All right. The balance the equation should be 2, 5, 4, and 2. Did you get it right? Good. So let's look at letter A. So in letter A it says how many liters of C2H2 are required to produce 75.0 liters of CO2? Now earlier I stated we're going to work at STP. We're going to assume this at STP so that way we can use molar volume. It makes the problem easier. If you don't know if it's an STP or not, if it doesn't say that specifically, you're going to have to use one of the gas laws. Most likely you'll have to use the ideal gas law. But in our case, we're just going to assume it's STP and that makes the problem a little bit easier. So we're going to use that molar volume value that we talked about earlier, 22 point liters. So you're going to take the 75 liters of CO2 and we're going to calculate the, you know, the, the number of moles that's inside of that volume of gas. So we're going to divide it by 22.4 liters per mole of CO2. Now the problem in letter A says how many liters of C2H2 are required. So we need the mole ratio that goes from CO2 to C2H2. So we look at the balanced equation here. It's two moles of C2H2 for every four moles of CO2. So that, so that gets us into our C2H2. Uh, these units are going to cancel out now. And our last step here is to go back into liters because it's asking for liters. So we're going to multiply that by the 22.4 liters per mole of C2H2. All right. Now go through the calculation here. After you've done the calculation, you should end with 37.5 liters of C2H2. All right, so I'm gonna let you work B and C on your own. And I'm gonna put the answer here so you can check your answer. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below or you can message me one of the two. So for letter B, we have 37.5 liters of H2O. For letter C, you will have 93.8 liters of O2. So in this example here, we're going to 
look at how we still apply stoichiometry, but in this example, we're not only just working with gases, but we're, we're working with solids also. And so the problem says, assume that 5.6 liters of hydrogen gas at STP react to the copper two oxide according to the following balanced equation. Before you ever do anything, make sure the equation is balanced. So let's do that right now. So we have one Cu on both sides, we have one oxygen on both sides, and we have two hydrogens on both sides. So our balanced equation is fine. Just make sure that they are balanced before you start it. Letter A says, how many moles of hydrogen react? Okay, so that we're, again, we're talking about we have 5.6 liters of hydrogen gas at STP. Now remember, at STP from earlier, we talked about STP have, being able to use 22.4 liters per mole of gas. So since we're dealing with hydrogen gas, we're given a volume, we're gonna use molar volume here, and we're gonna convert this into moles of hydrogen gas. So to do this, we're gonna divide it by 22.4 liters per mole of hydrogen gas. And that's going to be left, that's going to leave us with 0.25 moles of hydrogen gas. And so that's, that's all that problem is asking for us. So in, in question B, it says how many moles of copper are produced? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the answer from part A and we're going to use that to, to answer part B. So, so you're starting off with 0.25 moles of hydrogen. And we want to go from moles of hydrogen into moles of copper. So we're going to go use the balanced equation. In this example here, we have one mole of copper for every one mole of hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas goes away and we end up with 0.25 moles of copper. Now in part C, it says how many grams of copper are produced. So now, instead of going back to volume that we were doing earlier, so now we're gonna go from moles into grams and that is where we're gonna use our molar mass of copper. So we're gonna multiply by the molar mass of copper. So looking at the periodic table, uh, we're gonna make a look up the molar mass of copper the molar mass of copper is 63.55 grams per mole. So the moles cancel out here. We're gonna multiply across and what we end up with is 15.9 grams of copper. Okay, let's work on another problem. This time, we're not at STP. We're under just normal conditions of whatever normal might be for that specific problem. So, ammonium sulfate, important fertilizer can be prepared by the reaction of ammonia with sulfuric acid according to the following balanced equation. Calculate the volume of NH3 in liters needed at 20 degrees Celsius and 25 atmospheres to react with 150 kilograms of H2SO4. So, a lot of information given to you here. But the one thing that we need to start this problem with is the mass of H2SO4. So in this case, they give you 150 kilograms of H2SO4. So what we want to do first is we want to convert this kilogram into grams. And so to do that, we're just going to multiply by a thousand. So that gives you 150,000 grams of H2SO4. So just like any stoichiometry problem, the first thing we're gonna do is we need to get our grams into moles of H2SO4. So we're going to take this and we're gonna divide it by the molar mass of H2SO4, which is 98 grams or mole of H2SO4. So, second step after 
getting it to moles of H2SO4. Let's go ahead and convert a moles of H2SO4 into moles of NH3. So in order for us to do that, we gotta go back and use the mole ratio of, of NH3 to H2SO4. In this case, it's two moles of NH3 to one mole of H2SO4. So, going through the math here, uh, take this 150,000 divided by 98 times two, that's gonna give me 3,061 moles of NH3. Okay, so, so we have our moles. We have moles of NH3, which that's your gas. So the other information they give to you in the problem is they tell you it's at 20 degrees Celsius, 25 atmospheres. We're trying to solve for volume. So this is an ideal gas law problem. So PV equals NRT. We're trying to solve for volume. So we're gonna rearrange this where volume is equal to N RT divided by P. So just dividing out the pressure to the other side. So we know N, which is 3,061 moles. We know R, which is the gas constant, 0 0.08206. Temperature and pressure are the other two things we need. Now, they do provide you the temperature. They give you a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So, But what we need to do is we need to take the 20 degrees Celsius we're going to add 273 because we need that to be in Kelvin. So that gives you 293 Kelvin for your temperature. Now, the other thing is the pressure. They gave you the pressure of 25.0 atmospheres. That's the correct unit for ideal gas law. So we don't have to do any correct conversions there. So what we need to do is plug this into the ideal gas law here. So we have 3,000 and 61 moles of NH3. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres per mole times Kelvin. We're going to multiply that by the temperature, which was 293 Kelvin. And we're going to divide this by the pressure, which was 25.0 atmospheres. Now, the, the moles are going to cancel out here. The atmospheres will cancel out here, and then the Kelvin cancels out here. And so you end up with a volume equal to 2,943.9 liters. So this is the volume of, of NH3 that's needed to react with that amount of H2SO4. So what we get from this problem is that we see that we're not working at STP. We're working under whatever conditions the problem gives to us. So in order for us to be able to go through and solve for the, the answer that's looking for, we can't use molar volume here. But what we can use is we use a different gas law. In this case, we use the ideal gas law. I hope this helps you in, in working some of the problems that you come across.